Well, it's interesting actually that you're um, talking about listening to your body and what your body wants to eat. Uh, I don't always trust that. Because your body might tell you, if you happen to have a, a food sensitivity issue or, or a food addiction of something, mm -hmm. eat chocolate, you know, or whatever, eat bread. Or It isn't necessarily your body telling you what's all wise and true. Your body is maybe craving something that is uh, not the best thing for it. So I don't always trust that listen to your body mantra um, because I, I think that it, at least for us, a lot of times it doesn't come from a very clean and clear place. Uh, you mentioned that uh, in your speech that you, um, that once you started the neurofeedback, that really helped with an issue of depression that had been uh, lifelong to that point. Yeah. Uh, have you either, uh, through your treatment of other folks um, or through your research, discovered uh, situations where paleo itself without using the neurofeedback could also address issues of depression? I think if I had known then what I know now, I think it would have radically accelerated my process. I also know that neurofeedback can have, can be an exponential catalyst to that process um, because it really addresses dysregulated timing mechanisms. But again, your brain has to have what it needs in order to function. Um, and so, uh, and, and one of the things that I have learned since is that I have, you know, gluten sensitivities, um, and, you know, I was certainly uh, had, you know, issues with, you know, with blood sugar issues with a lot of things. Uh, and diet, dress, addressing these things dietarily, you know, have made a mammoth difference for me. Um, but I also don't know that it would have been as easy for me uh, in some respects at that time to have made those changes were it not for the neurofeedback getting me to a place of slightly of better functionality uh, to where I felt like I was able I was in a, in a place where I could deal with making big changes. Do you ever, in working with your clients, try one approach first and then the other? It depends on how they come to me, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I've been in private practice for, for 15 years now doing neurofeedback, and so I'm well known for that. So people walk in and they just, they, they want neurofeedback. I let them know that there's this other side of things that they can tap into and make use of. And some people are immediately interested in that. but. Usually we start, you know, with one and then the other. Now, with the advent of my book, I have a lot of people coming to me for just, you know, they, they want to address that nutritional side of things first. And, um, and I did some of that prior to, you know, to the book uh, coming out. Um, and some of these folks end up incorporating neurofeedback as well. And, you know, they definitely experience accelerated benefit with that. Uh, but it just depends. It depends on the person, and it depends on how they come to me. Uh, I don't, I don't attempt to prioritize one or the other over the other. And I and I'm not proselytizing, and I don't try to force things on people. But I, I will let them know that, that you know, if they're willing to make dietary changes, this can be substantially, uh, substantially improve the outcomes. Great. How for those of us who don't really know much about neurofeedback, other than. Um, reading the section in your book, um, can you compare how that changes the brain compared to new plasticity, brain plasticity exercises, or mindfulness meditation? Well, meditation is something altogether different. You know, typically in meditation, um, you know, we see, uh, you know, synchronous states of alpha happening, you know, in, in, you know, in the brain. Uh, one hemisphere to the other. I think any form of exercise is a good thing. With neurofeedback, the exercise is highly um, specific. Mm -hmm. And uh, we address, at least in terms of the, uh, the method through which I was taught, we really do a very fairly symptom-based approach. By, and by people talking to me about what's going on to them, it tells me a lot about what areas of the brain are likely to be involved. Different areas of the brain are localized for different functions. And by training over those specific areas, we can get fairly specific effects. So there is an accelerated and a much more customized approach to what kinds of issues people are presenting, rather than just sort of a generalized do things to sort of stimulate or exercise your brain. Um, again, neurofeedback gets, does this in a more highly specific and more customized uh, fashion.